Welcome everybody to a new video. Today we're going to be discussing stable diffusion versus mid journey. And specifically we're going to be taking a look at some of the images that I've created here and that I have for you and that we can take a look at the differences between the two. It's actually quite interesting between these two different technologies. Now just before we even begin, I want to go ahead and talk about what stable diffusion and mid journey are for somebody who's a beginner and may have never even heard of these things. Stable diffusion and mid journey are two different artificial intelligent image generation tools or softwares, or you could just say neural networks. And what they do is that they literally just create images based on a prompt and other few indicators that you provide. Now, that being said, there's a lot of talk. I guess you could say argument online of which one is better and which one is worse. What can provide better images? And the obvious reason why a lot of people like to create these kind of cool images other than just playing with a brand new technology is creating this these images for print on demand, for selling these images, and a lot of different other benefits that we spoke about here on this channel before when it comes down to making money online. Now, the cool thing about this is that this gives you the creator uh, power that you have never had before. All right. And you couldn't sit there and like all these images that you see here, they're done through artificial intelligence. If I was to sit here and learn just simply how to draw and how to color and how to do the digital art and all that it would take me centuries and to even get good at it on this level, it would take me thousands of years as an individual. But these machines have learned how to do this in a matter of seconds. And not only that, but training and training and training. Now we have these finished products that are always also being updated as well. Now, just as a little FYI, Stable Diffusion tends to be cheaper than Mid Journey. Obviously, it depends on how you're going to set it up and how you're going to run it. But Mid Journey is the only way you can access Mid Journey is through the midjourney.com website. And um, the only way you can access Stable Diffusion is through the original Stable Diffusion uh, repositories and things like that. However, there are many companies that go out there and they create off of Stable Diffusion's technology and they offer these products to the public so that they don't have to use their own GPUs, which in this case we did use our own GPUs, so I figured we'd make this video. So let's go ahead and get started comparing and contrasting the Stable Diffusion and Mid Journey images. Now, what I'm going to show you is I'm going to show you the images that are created by Mid Journey and the image then created by Stable Diffusion off of the very same prompt. So we're going to be comparing those, those productions off of the prompt, and then after that, we're going to be creating some images with the same likeness using the image-to-image -image technology for Stable Diffusion. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. So the first image you could see on the left-hand corner was created by Midjourney. OK, and you could see the prompt on the screen. I'm not going to go ahead and read it just because if I have to sit here and read every single prompt, we'd be here for a long time. And uh, on the right hand side is the image created by Stable Diffusion with the exact same prompt. Pretty interesting, right? How these two different artificial intelligence softwares created this image differently and thought of it differently. You can see that the image on the left incorporates a lot of different colors, almost like a rainbow effect. You have the oranges, the greens, the blues, the purples. But on the right, you see actually very few colors compared to the left, right? Stable Diffusion is using some dark colors, some blues, a lot of blacks, a lot of dark, you know, dark tones, and like a glowing green, which is actually pretty cool and pretty interesting that the one on the right decided to use a glowing green and the same one also in roughly in the same location also used on the left a glowing green. Pretty interesting. Interesting to think about and, and where these artificial intelligent tools are, are really acquiring this knowledge and where they really manufacturing it from. It's, it's pretty interesting, on, almost uh, inspiring in a way. All right, let's go ahead and move on. The next image is an image to image creation. So what we did was we took the original image that you see on the left hand side from mid journey. And by the way, all these mid journey images were created through multiple iterations, anywhere from 20 to 40 iterations. All right. So keep that in mind. These were not created off of the first time creation. So if you're trying to go with the uh, cheapest mid journey plan, you will probably use it out very, very quickly because you will have to make different iterations and things like that. All right. So 
the left hand side is the mid journey image after multiple iterations we took the exact same prompt but use that image in the image to image function within stable diffusion and this is the image that you could see here on the right hand side it's almost like a movie screen a before and after in a way right and that's kind of the best way that i can explain it you could see here on the left we have that tree in the middle hoisted up by some like large mound of land and then you have the city underneath it in the image to the right hand side we have the city in the back side of the image but yet in the front side almost like a, a wasteland that's been burnt down or something like that and the tree or what's left of the tree uh, exists with all the roots exposed and things like that so it's pretty pretty cool image and this is like i said from the image to image function within stable diffusion let's go ahead and move on to our next image created in mid journey here and this is the prompt this is the mid journey image created on the left hand side once again this is through multiple iterations many many different iterations over the course of 20 to 40 iterations per image okay something to keep in mind and now what we're going to do is i'm going to show you a collection of three different stable diffusion images with the exact same prompt okay so with the exact same prompt stable diffusion created these images now what I've noticed between the differences between stable diffusion and mid journey is that stable diffusion will provide a lot of detail in regards to the whole entire canvas right the whole entire piece of image however on the opposite hand stable diffusion will really really give a lot of detail for very specific intricate details so for example if you look at things like the leaves the trees on a micro level these are very intricate now stable uh, mid journey doesn't actually have that you could see here it's almost like a silhouette kind of aspect where there's not a lot of details around those things but the all the detail comes into the canvas as a whole so really what I could say here in my comparison from what I could see and what I could observe is that stable diffusion is better at creating minute details details that really uh, bring the photo to life but mid journey is really really good at taking account into the whole entire canvas as a whole and how it was supposed to essentially come out now something that I do want to say with the, both prompts for this image and this image they're both relatively specific right they, they are relatively specific if you look at some of the details we talk about a jungle landscape set during a twilight with the with the sky painted in the hues of orange and purple the scenic will be set near a river with tall trees these are all very very specific keyword indicators what you're going to see in the next example of the new image that we created was an abstract prompt, a prompt that really doesn't give that much detail and a lot of specificity. All right. But before we do that, let's go ahead and create our image to image uh, creation here and let's see how it looks. So image to image, we, like I said, use the exact same prompt after the iterations we created mid journey. We took the image and then we put it into stable diffusion and look at the beautiful image that came out here. This is insane amazing to me you guys know that there's like these paintings out there worth millions of dollars i feel like this would be one of them the one on the right hand side what a beautiful image it's very very um very, i mean i'm just speechless there's not much i could say about that and you could almost see how like it does have similarities to the one on the left right the structure the focus i mean you could really see it on the right hand side here this tree these bushes the way that the colors blend in you could see that same approach here in that left hand image which was the original from the image to image configuration all right so now let's go on to move on to that image for the um uh the abstract prompt the prompt that was much different than all the other prompts if you like i said the other prompts were very specific this was an abstract prompt so after multiple iterations you're seeing the image on the left with this specific prompt is what it came out to be which is actually a really cool image uh, and this image was created by once again mid journey mid journey there's this common theme of it. it it has a really good understanding of images within a canvas and how they relate to one another stable diffusion its understanding of that does lack from what we see but its intricacies on very small details do happen uh, or, or excuse me are much better that's the best way that i could say it uh, something that i did notice is that when you look at stable diffusion versus mid journey mid journey 
won't have as much as the errors that stable diffusion will come into play with. Like stable diffusion comes into play. There's a lot of errors where sometimes, it, not a lot, but you know, it's a good amount of times where two faces will be presented in the photo or like three hands or like two legs or even two creatures or two individuals when you're only meant for one of those individuals inside the photo. Um, stable diffusion, uh, mid journey on the other hand does, like I said, understand the photo or the part of the canvas created in relationship to another. So for example, if I was to create a photo on mid journey where I talk about like, for example, a tiger in a jungle, it will create that photo for me with only one tiger most likely. Uh, but on stable diffusion, it could potentially create the tiger for me like with four or five, six tigers in the photo, which is not what I necessarily requested because once again, it takes into consideration that intricate detail on a on a almost like a pixel for pixel basis, but stable to, uh, mid journey does not do that. Mid journey just looks at the whole entire canvas, and kind of adds detail to the whole entire canvas as opposed to on a very specific pixel for pixel basis for stable diffusion. Now we can go ahead and explain that like kind of this was the issue that I was running into with this abstract prompt is that there were multiple faces multiple images multiple bodies and I could never really get the image to come out properly with a prompt like this and truly goes to show that there's a skill behind prompt crafting and prompt engineering the process properly that's why we're creating a website for you guys a completely free tool for you to learn how to prompt properly by seeing other examples of images that were created properly and prompted properly so take a look at the image that we used for the image to image configuration here uh, this is a pretty insane configuration, pretty insane change from left to the right hand side. Pretty amazing, honestly, if you ask me. And um, you could see this was once again the mid journey image after multiple, multiple iterations. This one actually had more than any other, maybe because it was so abstract. And then we took that image, slapped it into stable diffusion and left the exact same prompt, all the same details, but yet it came out with this image on the right hand side. Now, we also played around a little bit with the prompt to maybe editing some aspects and you could see here we came out with different images. So the first image here and the image to the right are probably the most similar to each other uh, in reference to the image to image creation. And the one in the middle is almost like a lifelike version of the original mid journey image. As you can see, the mid journey image, although it is very, very clear and very um, uh, lifelike, this one is much more lifelike. This almost seems like a portrait of a, of a photograph almost. Uh, and you could tell here that like if you zoom in and you really look at the, um, the details in here, like the, the, the mustache and, and the beard and all that kind of thing, the hair, it looks like a real human being. Uh, but if you look at the, or, the original mid journey image that was created, like I said, after multiple iterations, it doesn't look like that. It looks like somebody who's a really, really good, let's just say painter was able to configure this. So there's a, a very slight difference here, uh, or not very slight, very powerful difference between these images. And you could see just by me flipping through the two images, the difference between the two. And uh, I think Stable Diffusion does take that home, that benefit of being able to create these lifelike portrait photograph style uh, creations, depending on your prompt and how you kind of prompt manage that. But this is my video on the differences between Stable Diffusion versus Mid Journey. I wouldn't say the differences, but definitely a comparison between some of the productions. Tell me if you have your own personal experience between Stable Diffusion and Mid Journey and how you would compare the two. And once again, guys, keep following with the channel because we will be creating a free tool, a free website for you guys to access so that you can just be able to manipulate your prompts better to get better results. All right. And that's that's coming soon. We're working on that. All right. I'll talk to you guys later. Thank you guys for watching and peace out. Bye.